course, this is what your package will look like when you first bring it or get it, receive it. And inside, here inside, this is what your uh, parabolic will look like as far as the contents inside of it. Uh, there's two sides to it. Um, this is where your uh, panels will come on the back side. These are your six panels. And inside, you'll have the rest of the equipment here. First of all, what most people will do is uh, disassemble the uh, panels. There's uh, six panels in here. And they all come uh, stacked together. Now we're going to uh, start assembling the base and the stand. And this is probably the part where most people have a concern or difficulties. Uh, it's pretty easy. No, and uh, another key to this also is to make sure everything's tightened because when you get your parabolic fully assembled and you have something that's loose, especially down here at the base, um, these have paint on the threads and so it is a little bit hard to get it to seat completely. If you can, turn it. If you need something like vice grips or uh, some channel locks or something like that to grip it, Get that as tight as you can so that it's not loose down there because your whole parabolic is actually going to be resting on that. And if you have any play in it, it'll go back and forth. Um, this is what they call the, uh, I forget what the, something cross. <laughs> but uh, this is the cross section of the uh, parabolic here. And this is what's going to support your whole uh, parabola, the dish part. Um, if you'll notice down here, these screws here um, can come in and out and to tighten them. And it's actually designed to work similar to like your Christmas tree stand. So if you've got your um, parabolic set up on some level ground, yet it's still tilting slightly to one side or another, all you have to do is loosen these screws to one side or the other and tighten one or loosen one, whichever, to get it to stand a little bit straighter. And then, um, I would recommend keeping your uh, little wrench nearby so that you can uh, tighten it down enough. And this is the other tricky part, is you are going to take the um, extension arm or the uh, leveling arm and you are going to uh, insert it right in here with the... Uh, and it has a hole in it. And you'll go through there and you'll put a nut on it. And this is the tricky part here. This little tension screw with a tension spring on it. I'll warn you right now before you start fiddling with it, do not unscrew it all the way to where it goes and comes right off of the edge of the bolt. Because it's very, very difficult to get back on. <laughs> a lot of people have done it and then struggle to get that tension spring back on there. So don't... Uh, don't wind the, the, the little wing nut all the way back to where it pops right off the bolt. because You'll have a real hard time getting it back on. It is doable, you can get it back on, but you'll wear your fingers out. I found out the hard way. Um, but you do need to have it loosened up somewhat so that the tension's not really tight on the spring, but don't loosen it so much that it pops right off. Then you're going to take this section here this right here is going to lay over this and you'll just slide that right on there. But you don't want to do that quite yet. I'm just showing you so you'll know where it's going to go so that you'll have the uh, holes downward in the correct position. Then this part back here where you have the, uh, the little slot for the lever You'll notice right there, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a little slot for this to go through. And you're going to uh, put your uh, little tension screw right there through that. And then this is going to come up through the bottom right there. A little bit hard to do this with one, one person here, but it is doable. And then you're going to uh, shimmy the the bar the adjustment bar up through the hole there now the hole from your little uh, 
um, insert here is a little off-centered. It's designed that way. It's offset. It's uh, drilled so that it's offset so it will create some pressure when you tighten the screw up. Otherwise it would just slide up and down freely. And that's the tricky part there. You have to be able to uh, put some tension, push on that so that the holes line up direct and then you can push this tension bar straight up through the hole and it'll come right out then. As you can see, this inserts up through the little slot and your bar will come up through there. But if you notice there, the hole is actually offset. They don't line up directly. So to be able to do that, and a lot of people have a hard time getting it through that hole, I just take it off. That way I can uh, put a little bit of pressure down and you're putting pressure on the spring and pushing it upward so that you can shimmy your uh, rod right through there. See now I've got my rod through there. I just had to release some of the tension. And so that's what I was doing there was releasing some of the tension on the on the spring so that the rod would fit through. Remember, don't back off the wing nut too much that it pops right off your bolt there. Okay, now that it's on, and there's another thing you can do also, if it's a little difficult in the beginning, you can lubricate the bar there so it'll slide on just a little bit easier. See how it's on there now? Then as you adjust it, you'll tighten it or loosen it when you need to move your elevation up or down, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Now you can slide your, slide it down to the point where you can uh, put this on here now. And you're going to want to take out of here, there's two cotter pins and right at the back or on these uh, crossbars right here, you'll find two holes. You'll just slide those cotter pins straight down. There we go. And then you'll just flare them a little bit so that they don't work their way back out later on. There we go. A little difficulty. That way your, uh, your whole uh, assembly that holds your parabola up won't uh, slide right off the crossbar here. Next comes the, uh, what they call the uh, annulus. Actually, it's not the annulus, it's a knight's head is what they call it. Where are we at here? Put the screw right through that. And that one will go right there. And then you just tighten it on with a nut. This is going to be your support for your, uh, your upper, what they call the upper annulus. I'm showing you the last part here because we haven't got the panels assembled yet. But before you put this on, you'll actually, well, you can actually put it on without the panels. But uh, you're best to put your panels on first. But I just want to show you how to assemble this here. And then we'll disassemble it and put the panels on later. Um, this is your, what I call the hot plate up here. The cooking burner, or whatever you want to call it. And this mounts right up here. Um, of course, you would be putting your uh, panels over this. And then uh, you would add these things on afterward because you have to be able to set the panel over right on top there. And then the panels will actually connect to these uh, little flanges right here. And you'll see on the back of your panel, you'll actually leave one screw out of the middle section of your panels. And now we're going to put the uh, parabola itself on top of the support ring. And very, very easy to line it up. Just let it rest like that. Each of the holes right next to the flange with a hole in it. Parabolic, great addition to your solar ovens and your panel cookers because then you can do anything you do on top of a stove.